Welcome back to Jack's Making It Home. Today we are making sweet potato mash, uh, or you can refer to it as mashed sweet potatoes. And this is a dish that we make throughout the year, but you could also reserve it for a healthier alternative during the holiday season. I say healthier because with this sweet potato mash, we actually did not add any added sugars. However, stay tuned because if you do want a little sweetness on the top, we gave you a second version with some broiled marshmallows. So we're going to get started by preheating our oven to 525 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I have gone ahead and lined two baking sheets with aluminum foil. Sometimes those juices can bubble out and you guys, it is so much easier to just take this foil out and discard it versus scrubbing those juices after they've been kicked onto your baking sheet. Uh, so literally the foil is just there so that we have an easy cleanup process. You guys, I'm really excited because usually I get my sweet potatoes from the grocery store, but my mom brought us these, which came from a farm in Virginia. Our church was selling them and they are so rich and uh, just the coloring of them, it's, it's so good. Now, I wanna say, regardless of if you're getting them from the grocery store or from a farm, we want to rinse these off before we put them on our baking sheet. So I'm going to rinse just using some warm water and I'm going to use a vegetable scrubber. You can just use your fingers and just lightly scrub around under the water, but make sure you are rinsing your potatoes before adding them to your baking sheet. Our sweet potatoes have been rinsed and now I have um, some paper towels and we're simply going to pat them dry and then add them to our baking sheet. With the baking sheet, we did not add any spray, any Pam. Again, the foil is just there um, to make the cleanup easier. So we've dried our sweet potatoes, we've placed them on our baking sheets and we've um, set them pretty evenly on the pan, giving them about equal amounts of space in between each potato. We're gonna slide these into the oven on the center rack. We're going to set our timer for one hour. Before cutting the oven off, we'll test the tenderness of our sweet potatoes by piercing them with a fork or a knife which should glide through the flesh very easily. The skin may be crisp, but it's the flesh that we want to focus on. For this batch, we actually let them go for an additional 30 minutes, giving a total bake time of one hour, 30 minutes at 525 degrees Fahrenheit. After taking the sweet potatoes out of the oven, we let them cool for a few minutes so that they aren't scorching hot when we go to peel them. However, we still want them to be warm as it'll help the other ingredients melt together. Please proceed with caution. We're peeling the sweet potatoes directly into a large mixing bowl. As you can see, I don't have any cool peeling methods, but if you do, be sure to list them in the comment section. However, as I'm peeling, I do ensure that there aren't lots of dry stringy pieces, especially near the ends. If you'd like, you can cut the ends off before peeling, as seen here. Now as for these dark spots, those are the natural sugars from the sweet potato that have concentrated in one area. If they feel hard, discard them because they're probably burnt and no one likes burnt sugar. If they're soft, you can leave them for the mixture. Now that all of our sweet potatoes are in our large bowl, we've grabbed a potato masher um, and we are going to go ahead and mash these together. Now, if your potatoes are tender enough, you could just keep your spatula that you may have been using. Um, we're gonna need this anyhow to mix it once we start adding our other ingredients. So if they're tender enough, you can go ahead and just start mixing with the spatula. Um, because I had some that were a little larger than others, 
I'm actually going to use the potato masher, which will help get them a little more tender before mixing. Guys, now that our sweet potatoes are mashed, the last step is to add some spices. And we only have a few ingredients that we are going to add and this will be done. Now guys, I can't lie, when I make this, I do not measure. <laughs> I don't measure. And I've actually realized that my least favorite part of cooking is measuring. Um, however, I understand that when you're following someone else's recipe, it can be a little tricky sometimes if you're trying to eyeball the same amounts that they're using. So I'm going to do my best to try to pay attention to the measurements that I'm using. I actually also have um, some measuring spoons. And so when I make this on my own, I make it as if, you know, potato salad, tuna fish, things like that, where you just kind of dump and taste and dump and taste. Um, each time I dump, Today, I will try to do so with the measuring spoons so that at the end I can tell you what the total measurements were for this batch. But truly, I think it works best when you just kind of taste as you go. Um, this is only for Raja and I, but if I was cooking for other people, which you may be doing, please, please, please always wash the spoon after each taste or use multiple spoons, obviously. That's gross. Sharing germs. All right, let's get started. So while I usually add these things in any given order, I do typically start with the butter. Uh, this butter is at room temperature, so it will blend nicely with our potatoes because it's already kind of melted. So, uh, let me start with two tablespoons of butter. Again, if we have it so that the potatoes are still a little bit warm, it helps for all of these ingredients to melt really nicely together. So next, we're going to do um, a teaspoon of cinnamon and a teaspoon of nutmeg. I'm sure we'll be adding more, but I don't want to start off with adding too much. So it's always easier to add more versus taking some away. So let's just start with one teaspoon of each. Doesn't have to be perfect. Teaspoon of nutmeg. I have a quarter teaspoon for salt. Honestly, that might be too much. Let's do half of that. Now we're gonna add our wet ingredients and I forgot to bring it into view for you all, but we also, in addition to vanilla extract, we also have um, lemon and I use lemon extract, lemon juice. I had some fresh lemons um, here at the house. So I actually just squeeze some fresh lemon juice. So we're gonna do 1 fourth teaspoon of our lemon juice. Okay, so now we're going to do a quarter teaspoon of our vanilla extract. All right, so we are gonna give this a taste and see where we're at. We need a little more nutmeg, um, half teaspoon. I actually think a little more cinnamon too. Quarter teaspoon on the cinnamon. We did need quite a bit more salt, so I am actually gonna fill this up this time. This is the quarter teaspoon again. Another quarter teaspoon of vanilla. And not quite as much of the lemon juice, so I'm just gonna do half. I might wanna add a little bit more butter too. Let me stir this and give another taste test. 
Mm, so much better than the first time. Let's do one more tablespoon of butter, one fourth teaspoon of cinnamon. I do need a little bit more cinnamon. And one more quarter teaspoon of vanilla. All right, I think we should be really close by now. Let's try it again. I think this might be, this is good. So guys, I have a secret ingredient that I think you guys might be really afraid to add. It's Old Bay. Let me tell you the quick story about Old Bay. I have an identical um, size of cinnamon. And one time when I was making the recipe, I accidentally sprinkled in a heaping amount of Old Bay thinking that it was cinnamon. Um, and so I tried to scoop um, most of it out, but a little bit of it remained. And it actually gave it this different but good taste. So I'm gonna put a little Old Bay in. Obviously this is optional. Um, I know it sounds super weird, but if you dare, try it. And if you wanna try it, but you're nervous, what you could do is just take out um, a little tester size and sprinkle a smidgen of Old Bay and eat it and see how you like it so that you don't ruin your entire dish. Now because this is such a unique ingredient, I'm definitely gonna add this in very sparingly until we get the right mixture. So starting with 1 fourth teaspoon. I'm not gonna do the huge heap like I did the time, but I made a mistake adding it. Old Bay also has salt in it, so just remember that if you're going to add the Old Bay and you think that you're lacking a little bit of the plain salt, maybe add the Old Bay first before you add more regular salt because the Old Bay could give you that extra hint of saltiness that you thought was missing. And you can also see that as we're steering and steering, it's getting, um, the consistency is getting almost like a nice whipped consistency. All right, let's see if we can taste our Old Bay. I can, but I could go for just one more. One more quarter teaspoon and it'll be good. I already know that I won't need any more than that. Now, guys, once you get it to your liking, you're done. That's it. So we'll mix this up, give it one more taste, making sure we're not missing anything. Just like, again, when you're making that potato salad, sometimes I like to get someone else's opinion, or sometimes I let it sit for a minute and come back to it, eat something that will kind of cleanse your palate. I think it's great as is. So now we are going to ladle it into our serving dishes and I'll give you a few more hints of things you can do if you wanna jazz it up even further. Okay guys, so it's that simple. Now I've placed the measurements that we used today in the description box below, but I'm telling you, if you really could just add and taste as you go, that is the best method. I never, ever, ever measure. I just use my good old taste buds to guide me every time I make this dish. Now we said that we were being healthy, so I just wanted to show you that this dish is possible to make without adding any additional sugars. However, we make this dish 
year round and so sometimes I'm feeling a little healthier than, than other times and when I'm not feeling as healthy I will go ahead and sometimes I just add in some maple syrup sometimes I just add in some brown sugar sometimes I add in both um, so if you have either of those or even maybe some agave uh, you could sweeten it up a little bit now another reason why I think it's best to go off of your taste buds and not measurements is that you can never buy um, the same size potatoes every time you make this also the potatoes that you get you know one day may be sweeter than the potatoes you get the next day so really use your taste buds versus measuring now you may have heard the stove just go off and that's because I'm going to show you um, another way that you can sweeten things up if you'd like. So we have two dishes here. Uh, we place these into oven safe, microwavable safe dishes because these, these heat up really well. You can pop these in the refrigerator once they're cool and then take it out, put it directly in the oven if you need to reheat it for the next day. But for one of our dishes, we're going to add marshmallows so if you are adding marshmallows on top that would be another reason why you may want to cut back on the sugar using no added sugar or using um, a light amount a light amount that didn't sound right at first but I guess it is what I was trying to say now I have um, semi jumbo marshmallows you could use the smaller ones whichever size you want you could cover it however you want but when the oven went off that was actually our broiler so we're not baking these marshmallows one we're going to broil them I also will say that if you are not going to eat um, this dish in one setting just add some marshmallows on the section that you are going to eat uh, that way you can just add them fresh each day and not have to rebroil them all right so I'm gonna pop this in the oven and I'll show you what it looks like Okay guys, so we broiled um, our sweet potato with the marshmallow on top literally for four minutes. Never walk away from a broiler, it goes so fast. Um, and then that gives it the nice brown, uh, crisp but not burnt marshmallow on the top. If you wanted the marshmallow itself to kind of melt a little bit more, you could cut the broiler off and move the pan to the bottom of the rack, or you could put it on um, bake at a low temperature just to let the bottoms of the marshmallows uh, get a little bit more ooey and gooey. But here is a way to make a fancier presentation and also to add a little sweetness. We have our final regular dish nothing additional added and it is good just as is i promise you but um some other thoughts are you could add some candied or just crushed pecans you could add some dried cranberries both so you can jazz this up however you'd like Now I do want to give a note of caution, if you've never baked at such a high temperature or if you have a gas oven, uh, consider actually preheating your oven to 475 degrees Fahrenheit. 525 degrees Fahrenheit is the highest baking temperature on my oven and I used to bake my sweet potatoes at a lower temperature but what I realized for myself is that I can go up to that high temperature of 525 and uh, the cook time is less so I can generally get them nice and tender um, at about an hour. Now the only 
negative side to baking them at a high temperature is that sometimes you'll get more of their juices start to bubble out but honestly guys with my oven i've never sometimes i've left them in a little longer i've never burned the actual flesh of the sweet potato sometimes the skin will get nice and crisp and again you'll see those juices bubbling out but for this recipe we're going to uh discard the skin anyhow so it's quite all right if this is your first time uh, use your best judgment on what your oven should be preheated to, but for me, it is 525 degrees Fahrenheit. I also want to mention that we do not need to wrap these individually in foil before putting them in the oven. We don't need to pierce them with a fork, put hole, holes in them. I've done both of those things before. Um, and for me, that seems to make a difference when I'm making whole sweet potatoes that I'm gonna eat with the skin still intact. Um, sometimes the skin can be a little crispier, I think, if you wrap them individually in foil. But listen, we're disregarding the foil as we said before. We're disregarding the skin as we said before. And so um, it saves us time. We don't need to pierce them. We don't need to individually wrap them. We literally just dry them and put them on the baking sheet. Now, I also want to mention that when you're purchasing your sweet potatoes from the store, you may want to make sure that they're similar in size. I'm at the end of my bag, so some of mine are larger than others. This will make for an uneven cook time. However, don't worry if we need to pull several um, of the smaller sweet potatoes out before pulling out the larger ones. We certainly can do that. I'll show you in a moment how to make sure, how to test to make sure that they're tender and that they're done. Um, and if you're doing two baking sheets like I am, you also can make sure that you put similar sized potatoes on each baking sheet. So I'll put my larger potatoes on one baking sheet and the smaller ones on the other. If you give this a try, let us know. We hope you enjoy it. Tell us if you're using exact measurements or just your good old taste buds. Please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, be blessed.